We are recording now. The um, so so, what I thought was interesting is this last section that we're talking about is is going to be um, it, it does that 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 kind of literary device where it talks about one thing and then at the end it kind of comes <laughs> comes together. And so as we read these last three chapters, I want us to remember that literary thing is going on, that these stories are out of place. And the reason why is it's operating as a summary and, and it's helping us understand how the book, the first, second Samuel understands its own text. And, and so, and, and then we see kind of in the heart of it, is is you know i liked how tim Mackey there was going back and going all the way back to the beginning of hannah's song which as we remember when we talked about hannah's stuff there the hannah song sounds like mary's song mary's song when she is when, when she discovers that she's she's pregnant with jesus and she sings the magnificat it it, it sounds like hannah's hannah's song so these the, the scriptures are picking up these trends and, and helping us see the trends of God's kingdom and how it works in, in the world. So, um, so let me ask you guys a question. Should we just read the last three chapters just all the way through, or should we, should we kind of do it like we normally do, like break it up by chapter and kind of, kind of go through. Tiny feather. Oh, so we're going to be able to do that. Well, we'll find out. We'll find out. So, so, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. Lee, you look like you wanted to say something. Did you want to say anything? I, I was, I was fixated on the one part where they go back and they say, uh, when David humbled himself, he was exalted. Same thing with Saul. And I, I, my first thought was, isn't that a clue that the Messiah is going to come in the same way? Yeah, yeah. And that's and and I'll say I'll say this about the next four sermons. Like this week, we have the messianic promise, you know, that, that God is going to bless David's house. Like that's that's this one. Next week is the Bathsheba stuff, which is going to end with him with that giant crown on us on his head. The week after that is the whole Absalom thing. Ed Scott's going to preach that one. Like that's about family trauma. It, that's he. Ed Scott always has done grief ministry. His whole that one he should really handle that one really well. And and then and then um and the then the last one over there. So these last four, like we're really pulling into these themes that we've been playing with throughout this entire sermon series. It's really coming coming together. And, and so, so yeah, we're, we're really pulling this stuff, really pulling this stuff together. All right. So, um, we got through chapter, I'm not even to where I need to be in the Bible. 22. So we, we talked about last week, we talked about, um, like just like kind of the failures of it all. We, we noticed and what, what I thought was very interesting was, David um, has these interactions with the Goliaths, with Goliath's sons, mm -hmm. and David isn't able just to conquer them like, like, like that's like, like he did. There's still conquering going on, but it's not, it's not in the same way. People were trying to protect him, but, uh, but what, what I the th the theme I see in this book is that the Messiah, which means king, messianic is king, and and. And the, this, the king is at his best when it's kind of at this low state. And that's kind of what Lee, the Lee, Lee said. And that we as Christians look at Jesus, and Jesus comes not from the glorious reign of David, but comes from that almost fallen reign. Like that's, and, and that, and I think that speaks huge amounts to, to how God's kingdom works. That God's kingdom isn't at its best when we are at our best, type type of thing. Like it, it it's at its best we're on, we're almost at our at our worst type of thing, which is like where you see forgiveness of sins and, and all those things. So so that that's kind of what we saw there. So let's let's read through twenty two. 
Let's go all the way through 23.7, and let's go that. It's kind of a big, big poem. So let's go through all of those things. So chapter, chapter 22. Let me make sure I got my right Bible. Yep, I got it. And and then we'll hit. And I'm recording now. And we hit this button, this button, and here we go. Then David spoke to the Lord the words of this song. On the day when the Lord had delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior. You save me from violence. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies when the waves of death surrounded me. The floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry entered his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and flew, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness canopies around him, dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him, coals of fire were kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. He sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning bolts, and he vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, the foundations of the world were uncovered. At the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils, he sent from above. He took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me. And as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his eyes. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With a blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. You will save the humble people, but your eyes are on the haughty, that you may bring them down. For you are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord shall enlighten my darkness, for by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? God is my strength and power, and he makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. 
You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me, so my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them. Neither did I turn back again till they were destroyed. And I have destroyed them and wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They looked, but there was none to save, even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust of the earth. I trod them like dirt in the streets, and I spread them out. You have also delivered me from the strivings of my people. You have kept me as the head of the nations. A people I have not known shall serve me. The foreigners submit to me. As soon as they hear, they obey me. The foreigners fade away and come frightened from their hideouts. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let God be exalted, the rock of my salvation. It is God who avenges me and subdues the peoples under me. He delivers me from my enemies. You also lift me up above those who rise against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. He is the tower of salvation to his king and shows mercy to his anointed, to David and his descendants forevermore. Now these are the last words of David. Thus says David, the son of Jesse, thus says the man raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. The God of Israel said, The Rock of Israel spoke to me. He who rules over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God, and he shall be like the light of the morning when the sun rises, a morning without clouds, like the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Although my house is not so with God, yet he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. For this is all my salvation and all my desire. Will he not make it increase? But the sons of rebellion shall all be as thorns thrust away because they cannot be taken with hands. But the man who touches them must be armed with iron and the shaft of a spear, and they shall be utterly burned with fire in their place. The Okay. Cheery things there at the end. As as always, as always. Uh, um, okay, so so what? Um, so this kind of this this middle part is this is you know, in chapter twenty two, um, and then on into twenty three is kind of this long, long poem. What um, what stood out to you? What 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 did you think was interesting in inside this poem? Hearing Mackey's synopsis. Yeah. He had some lack of self-awareness. From who? David. From David? He's extolling his overarching virtue and... He wasn't very virtuous. No. So again, he just based on his Yeah. So I'm trying to reconcile yeah. this, David's self-perception with what's going on. Yeah. No, no, no. I think, 
I think that's good. And I think you see that what you're talking about. And I think you see that really hit in 23, you know, where that beginning of 23, like it's where it kind of goes where it's not very all that, all that cheery. And he seems to be like really resting on power and might and, and things like that. I have a bunch of question marks around 22 to 28. <laughs> I'm so great. I, I'm blameless. I didn't do a thing. Yeah. Sheba was the one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, that one's, that one's interesting is I, I, I definitely uh, went, well, uh, had that part uh, marked up there too. So why, why do you think he's talking about? It? So we're talking about verses 22 through 28 kind of, Kind of um, like uh, what? What do you what do you think's kind of being said there? Well, I I think he's not realizing that he actually committed these. See, I've been forgiven, but I did actually commit. Yeah, I mean, we all mm -hmm. we all know what we did in our lives that we're not proud of. Yeah, and we know we're forgiven for them, but yet. I don't know about anybody else, but I still mm -hmm. am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That what 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 else? Because I I have this like verse twenty four said I was I was also blameless before him and kept myself from iniquity. Yeah, yeah the choice of words are startling. Yeah, yeah. Was this written because the synopsis talked about not everything being in order? I'm wondering if this was written before Bathsheba. No, I don't think so. I, I think this is collected after the book had been put together. And it, I think it's basically like this poem and the, and kind of what we ended on last week um, is kind of helping us. It, how do we interpret what what has has happened? How do we interpret what has happened in this in this book? Because a lot of consequential things have happened, including chapter seven which is the linchpin, which is that that promise that God will bless the house of David. And and that's and and that's key there here too because you know they're kind of maintaining that what does that Davidic line look like? You know, as as they're as they're going forward. And I think it's fascinating that David is not getting looked at with like he's being honored and revered but also people really aren't shying away from his struggle too. And so it's like when we got to that, that 22 through 28 region, I thought it was, I thought it was interesting that that section does enter with like, you, know, you, you save the humble people type, type uh, that, that kind of, that kind of language there and your eyes are on the hottie and, and you, and you bring them down. I, I thought, I thought that little bit there like really sounds like that that poem of Hannah at the beginning of first Samuel. Like that's that you know the, the God lifts up the lowly you know and, and brings down the proud and that 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 bit there sounds sounds there. Um what else kind of stood out stood out to you? I thought that there were hints of the Holy Spirit and Jesus in here. Okay, like uh, where? The wing. The wings is the wind. And what verse, verse was 11. that? Eleven. Verse eleven. And brightness before him in verse thirteen. Okay. There's several other brightness things in there, but that all of a sudden I was feeling that's in there, and yeah. this actually refers to eleven psalms that came out of this. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. David was one of the and I counted seven Psalms. hymns that yeah. came out of it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe more. David actually wrote the Psalm 18. It's exactly the same as yeah. this. Here, here that. The, uh, I'm sure it's attributed to him. Is there an issue? No, no issue. I just said you had a whole group of people here. I just wanted to make the announcement. Rain help is still off for next Thursday if they get enough people to call in and sign up for it. Okay. They are at 11 people now, but they need about 20. So they'll make their decision Monday. When I walk out, I'll get the thing. Okay, that's why I wanted to make you know. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah, no, that's that's good. That's good. So, um, okay, so 
so um yeah yeah so so that that uh, where i was going to say something that was going to be brilliant <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot of it's three all the golf to light he's acting on three is the light of the world yeah red michael and brian <laughs> the um and so so um yeah so so let's see here one of the things that, about that that whole section that talks about like that dark canopies oh i remember what, like, like she said that, was this attributed to david and like psalm 18 i'm pretty i'm pretty sure like song like her word and parts of it yeah and and what could be happening here is that that they're taking they did like a master cut of things that david wrote and kind of putting it in here at the end in an effort to kind of explain what's going on and and in David's in David's world, and remember when you get into poetry, it's you know you're not looking for the exactness. You're it's it's like anything with poetry. Right? My favorite way to explain poetry is that song. You know, if I could walk five five hundred miles, you know, oh, yeah. walk, that's gonna be in my head. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get that in your head now. Yeah, because that's Thanks. like you're not gonna walk five hundred miles just to be with you. You know, you're not gonna swim. <laughs> you know, a, th a thousand. A thousand miles, you know, like that. That's yeah, yeah like, like like that's you know, that's. But it's it's talking about the desire to be with that person, and it's using that language, and that's kind of how poetry does. So poetry allows that part of us that that's that we can picture things in our head to kind of come through here. So like when Cheryl was mentioning, like, oh, it kind of sounds like the the Holy Spirit. That's good. Like also with those. Cloud, you know, thick darkness and canopies and dark waters and cloud, like all this, that whole thing kind of sounds like God creating the, the the sea and the churning and all all these things of this kind of creation. It also kind of has a sense to the end of the book of Job, like when um like when 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 God is showing Job around all these mighty things. And it almost kind of brings Job to a place where it's like, oh, like this is all so much bigger. I thought I had a handle on the on the world around me, and it's all immensely more complex than anything I could understand. I kind of I kind of got started getting that feeling about it in there. And um, the uh, I, I thought it was interesting. I, I uh, first thirty five, like. It says that he, he teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend the bow of the bronze. I kind of thought of Goliath with that because it was, you know, doing something which would be, you know, way, you would need to be way more powerful than normal to be able to do. And uh, yeah, yeah, like super strength and, and things like that. So um, also uh, verse 47, mm -hmm. how it says the Lord lives, blessed be the rock. Let God be exalted, the rock of my salvation. Like my mind, like, and this isn't what he's thinking when he's written that, but when Jesus looks at Peter and is like, upon this rock, you know, I, I'm going to establish my church. And and so like this, you, you kind of, a lot of times we make, make it very strong about Peter, but like it could be talking about how Peter you know, is being connected to that that rock of salvation, which is talked throughout the Psalms. You know, kind of throughout the Psalms that that it is connected to that thing there. Um, did, did anyone else? Did you notice anything else that you wanted to that you wanted to to say about this this chapter? <laughs> But, but I think it's serving as kind of an overview of kind of this theology of David. And, you know, and as I think about that, this whole section of 22 through 28, you know, I kind of wonder if, if it's functioning, uh, verses 22 through 28, if that's functioning as a snapshot of David's life in that moment. You know, like that that's... Yeah. Where we're kind of moving through through his existence or something like that, and going through his, I don't know. I'm just and and that's 
Well, I don't think you're wrong because I know you're not, but. <laughs> you could, yeah, it could be. <laughs> I'm like, I do have a footnote that, that lends towards an earlier comment about potentially having this having been written prior to many of the events in Samuel. Um, that's what my footnote suggests is that um, the song was composed shortly after David's victories or for, over foreign enemies and before his sin with Bathsheba. I don't know. Just yeah. noticed that right after you <laughs> said you're gone. <laughs> so, yeah. So I think, I, I think that's all, these are all kind of valid, valid parts to this as, as this is functioning as like, here's kind of the summary of, of the book with the, with the, with the, with the, with the positives and the negatives and, and all these things, it, it's almost like it's kind of allowing it to be a little messy, because that's that's what's interesting about he, the Hebrew faith, is that at the same time they really try to clean it up, but also they are very okay with it being messy, you know. Like that's when, and the biggest difference I see in that is like Protestants, you know, it's like you you better agree with me or get out type of thing. <laughs> We never say anything like that, Mick, but that's, that's basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, but that's basically like the, the sense to it where, where the, where the Hebrews though, uh, they, they will, they will like, well, this, this rabbi believes this and they'll talk about it. Like, and, and this rabbi believes this completely contradictory, contradicting it. And, and, you know, that's, that's because they have this rich history and that, and they want to maintain that history rather than like a perfect ideological thought. Um, now they, the way they look at the law stuff may have gotten them in trouble a little bit with all, all that stuff, but that's, that is, that's kind of, that's kind of there. So I feel like when you say, if it seems weird, let it be weird. Yeah. Yeah. If it <laughs> seems weird, let it be weird. Like, like that's, and, and, and I think that's what we kind of see through here so kind of as i was going through like you know like the the lord is my rock is kind of how it begins like and yet i see death and sheol all around like and 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 in this like the, there's all this creative force of the majesty of the creation and and i've seen i'm blameless all through throughout like that that's and yet god saves the humble not not the powerful like and in fact he he'll he lifts up the humble in such a way that he makes makes my way perfect and so much so that i can bend bronze with my own with my own hands you know and that like yeah like you have given me the the sword the sword uh, the shield of salvation and and talking about everything that's going along with his enemies so it's kind of this this summary and again he goes back to the lord is the lord is my rock like it, it and uh, and I will sing his praise forever. So I don't know. It's it's a little. It's nothing concrete. Lee, you want to say something? I could tell. I I have a I have trouble with this because all I keep seeing in this is me, 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 me. <laughs> he's, he's not. No, he's not. He's not praising God for God. Yeah. It, yeah. Okay. So now you let me beat this guy up, and I was able to do that, and this. That you know, they're, they're a great God. Like, yeah. There's too much me in it. There's too much me in it? Yeah. Yeah. Cameron, you seem like you wanted to say something. Well, just going back to that 21 through 25, look how he books that book ends it. The Lord has dealt with me. And then 25, and the Lord has rewarded. The book ends with God doing. And then I looked up just right above that in verse 20. He brought me out of a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. That is a footnote that takes you to 1526. Uh, but if he says, I have no pleasure in you, behold, here I am. Let him do to me what he seems good, what seems good to him. So David is very much at that point, at least in time saying, you know, hey, I'm man, you're God. If you want to crush me, you're God. What am I going to do? But he is not you. So do with me what according to what you seem what you want to be good. 
where the powder comes from. Yeah, and I think he's. So I didn't give him these because I was very, I, I was very like, I was very focused on twenty one to twenty five. Going, David, what are you doing, dude? What? Do you, have you forgotten? Have you forgotten what you did? But I think he's very much just like, you know, what God do with me, and God is clearly, you know, he's blessed me at least in, in at least in, in some way. He was mm -hmm. the anointed one. I think he's very much just okay with. Leaving it up to God. Yeah, it's, and, and this is, and, and you know, the, the, it's, it's, there's a ton going on. There's a ton churning yeah. in, in, in this. And we even talk about chapter 23 and what's going on there. Cause that's, it really seems like it, it, it takes a negative note there. I can't what you just about if it's weird, let it be weird. I'm oh like, yeah. It's imperfection. It's imperfection. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. As mm -hmm. say. Yeah, it is what it is. And so, and, and this is, and this is one of the things that I, that I really admire about a lot of the scriptures. Um, they're, they don't often just want to clean it up and make it all tidy. You know, that that's whitewashing. Yeah. Yeah. They're like the whitewashing and all that stuff. Cause I mean, that's it. We don't have to look far to into other histories to see, like, you know, you look at the histories of the Assyrian kings and all of that, and it's just whitewashed. Those guys were like gods on earth, you know, like that. That's that they were all they were all whitewashed and all that. And 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 the fact that we, like that's not really the case that we get here, especially in the next little bit like that's that it's. It kind of goes off. It's very much not whitewash, and yet, in the midst of all that dirtiness, the hope bursts forth from that. Like, like an Easter, I often talk that with with that dirty kind of muddy soil is what flowers bloom out of, type of type of thing. And it's it's, it's, it's I don't know I don't know, but it, it's so. Um, let's go on. Let's go on to read the rest of 23 let's read the rest of 23 and then we'll go on to 24 after that let's see let's share the screen now ed bach had strong feelings about this section as i walked in so as he walked in so here we go chapter 23 these Verse are the names of the mighty men whom david is named joseph bashibeth the Tacmonite. All right, here from I'm the coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Oh man, hold on. I thought I stopped it. So you have killed eight. Let, let's just kind of walk through this together. <laughs> Where's son? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thirteen. Oh, yeah, it's a little more <laughs> story based. Yeah. There's thirteen. Get get it to there. A little bit. Let me get, get back into names pretty quick. Yeah. Um, so, so, so basically like, especially if you look at the Tim Mackey, Mackey thing, it's, it's another story about how, how, how David, he's looking weak again. It's like David is mighty man. And he's looking weak again, just like he was with, with Goliath. Remember that? Like, that's like Goliath, Goliath's sons, like the, the, his guys were like, oh, you need to go. Go scuttle off to the to the palace, please. Please don't be out here. They still defeated them, but it's not that same sense because we got to remember when G when David defeated Goliath originally, he was a young boy, mm -hmm. and, and it's almost like David has something to lose now, whereas when he was a boy, he didn't have anything to lose, and that kind of seems to be how how that stuff uh, how that stuff works in the kingdom of God. So. Um, all right, so we'll just read parts of this. So verse 15, I'll just read some of this. Verse 15, and David said with longing, oh, that someone would give me a drink of the water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines, drew water from the well of Bethlehem, and was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink it, but poured it out to the Lord and said, far be it from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is this not the blood of the men who went in jeopardy for their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. That's odd. That's, really odd. That's odd. 
And these were the things that were done by those mighty men. Makes me think of Pilate washing his hands. Oh, that makes you think of Pilate washing his hands? Yeah. Like that. that's, um, uh, yeah. And so verse 18, now, now this guy, there's a brother, Joab, um, lifted a spear against 300 men, killed them in one one uh, name among these three. Uh, was he not the most honored of the three? Therefore, he became their captain. However, he did not attain to be the first first three. Um, then that guy. So, so it talks about how they've done these amazing things. Like he killed an Egyptian. That's verse 21. A spectacular man. So all these these amazing stories. And he was honored amongst the 30. And David appointed him over the guard. Verse 24 is Ashahel. Um, what did he do? Lots of names, lots of names, <laughs> lots of names. And 20. Uh, and then we get to 24. <laughs> so so I think what we see here. Um, what was the last name, though? What was the last name? Uriah. Oh, oh, Uriah the Hittite. So that's why that's there. That's why that's there. That whole list of guys. He wasn't just a soldier. Yeah. 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 He was one of the. He, he was. Yeah. So he was one of the mighty men. Last one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Not just a random face in the army, but yeah. one of the closest. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. Like that's. It's good not noticing this. So so again, you have like this little section here. Um, you end with Uriah the Hittite's name. But would it, is that like birth order, you think? Or is that all no. the men at the same time? I was wondering who would die first. Yeah, no, no, like that's, I, I think I think we're talking about, like uh, it's this kind of sense of like, here's these mighty things they've done. But David here in the middle of it does this thing with water putting his guys at, at personal harm to get the water from Bethlehem and then just pours it out on the ground. I don't think he ordered them to go get it. Yeah. yeah. It's like they heard him say that and they just went on their own. Yeah. 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 No, that's what, that's definitely what it sounds like, but it's still, it's still, it's still odd. Like before I'm like, if they put themselves at harm's way, you know, and, and that's, and then he doesn't, doesn't use it. Lee, did you want to say something? I thought I, it struck me as it, it, it kind of got to him. In other words, he wasn't able to do it himself mm. for him. So you're, so you're kind people, of bending in into the weakness part. Yeah. So he, yeah. he's, you know, yeah. he's not going to drink it now. I couldn't do it myself. I don't want it. Okay. <laughs> Kind of, kind of, kind of bend, bending into that that weakness part, and and Cameron's catch with the Uriah the Hittite there, the last the last name mentioned, like that's you can tell that's the point of why this is getting written, is that they they want you the guy who David killed because of his sin with Bathsheba, they, they want you to see that, right right there right right there, like that's 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 a good catch that's a good catch. And uh, I need to remember that because there was that, a lion in there. Your sermon on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> three, three, four Sundays. Four Sundays. Four <laughs> Sundays. We put a footnote. Yeah, yeah, Cameron. It's I already wrote Chris next to it. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't erase. I can't erase. And three <laughs> warriors were who uh, brought the water. Three. Three. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a lion in verse twenty. Yeah, the, 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 we kill the lion first, and then yeah, yeah. then the Egyptian. Whole lot of yeah. little things. Yeah. yeah, there's and those and that all sounds like like so the lion and the Egyptian like this is all these are all, all important uh, themes that have gone along with the history of Israel, and so that's yeah. Well, I, I was just looking at this note when I was thinking about who died first, but. Um, it just goes on and says, okay, there's 30 people on that. And at last it says, uh, so it appears that the list includes the names of replacements for the vacancies when a warrior either dropped out or died. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And not yeah, necessarily in that order. Yeah. 
but he had his 30 and if someone died then then <laughs> gotta give a replacement yeah you, you gotta get something else but right, 37 okay let's let's do 24 24 of which Mackie calls the failure of David should be cheery yeah, yeah Joab was is. not in that list by the way um Joab wasn't on the list wasn't in that list. that's interesting yeah because he was right there with him the whole time again the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel and he moved David against them to say go number Israel and Judah so the king said to Joab the commander of the army who was with him now go throughout all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba, and count the people, that I may know the number of the people. Now may the Lord your God add to the people a hundred times more than there are, and may the eyes of my Lord the King see it. But why does my Lord the King desire this thing? Nevertheless, the King's word prevailed against Joab and against the captains of the army. For Joab, the captains of the army, went out from the presence of the king to count the people of Israel. And they crossed over the Jordan and camped in Aroah, on the right side of the town, which is in the midst of the ravine of Gad, and toward Jason. Then they came to Gilead, and to the land of Tatin Hajj. They came to Danjean, and around Saigon. And they came to the stronghold of Tyre, and to all the cities of the Hivites and the Canaanites. Then they went out to south Judah, as far as Beersheba. So when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. Then Joab gave the sum of the number of the people to the king. And there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men who drew the sword, and the men of Judah were 500,000 men. And David's heart condemned him after he had numbered the people. So David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done, but now I pray, O Lord, take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. When David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, David's seer. Go and tell David, thus says the Lord, I offer you three things. Choose one of them for yourself, that I may do it to you. Gad came to David and told him, Shall seven years of famine come to you in your land? What shall you free three months with your enemies while they pursue you? Or shall there be three days' plague in your land? Now consider, and see what answer I should take back to him who sent me. I am in great distress. Please let us fall into the hand of the Lord. Faith and mercies are great, but do not let me fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel from the morning till the appointed time. From Dan to Beersheba, 70,000 men of the people died. When the angel stretched out his hand over Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from the destruction and said to the angel who was destroying the people, It is enough. Now restrain your hill. The angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. Then David spoke to the Lord when he saw the angel who was striking the people. Surely I have sinned, and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, why have they done? Let your hand, I pray, be against me and against my father's house. And Gad came that day to David and said to him, Go up, erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna, 
the Jebusite. So David, according to the word of God, went out as the Lord commanded. Now Arun looked, saw the king and his servants coming toward him. So Aruna went out and bowed before the king with his face to the ground. Why has my lord the king come to his servant? To buy the threshing floor from you, to build an altar to the lord, that the plague may be withdrawn from the people. Let my lord the king take, offer up whatever seems good to him. Look, here are oxen for burnt sacrifice and threshing implements, and the yokes of the oxen for wood. All these, O king, Aruna has given to the king. May the Lord your God accept you. No, but I will surely buy it from you for a price. Nor will I offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God with that which costs me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver. And David built there an altar to the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord heeded the prayers for the man, but they was withdrawn from his reign. All right, First Kings. All right, <laughs> 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 like that. that that's... <laughs> Did I not share the screen with you guys? No, I didn't. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, we were reading. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's reading. So, so, sorry about that, guys. The, um, okay, so, so there a lot of lot of interesting things in there. That there's a lot of stuff that should sound familiar. Yeah. Um. What? Let's start talking about it. What sounds familiar? Uh, fifteen, the plague. Okay, the plague, the plague. A lot of three. The census. The this, plague, the, the census, the plague, and the altar. The, and, the, and the altar. Mm -hmm. So, so like that's. So let's they do. Let's do the, the census first. Mm -hmm. um, first off, I want to notice. I want everyone to notice um, in verse one. Again, it started talking about is numbering Israel and Judah. That's a subtle thing. This is the first time I've really caught it. What was it last week when I when that that David's great thing before Bathsheba was that he unified. It was all of Israel, and now it's it's the division. You know, it's like he's still king over it all, but it's being mentioned Israel and, and Judah. You know, all is not all is not well. And it, this, the note in here says in First Chronicles chapter twenty one, it says that. Satan incited David to take the sentence where this refers to the Lord being the one. And it ultimately says the Lord allowed it to be taken. Yeah. His purpose. So, 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 um, there's something weird going on with the census stuff. Let's, let's talk about Chronicles real quick. So if you look in your, your, our English Bibles don't do this. If you look in Hebrew Bibles, which this one is laid out like a Hebrew Bible. Chronicles is the last book of, of the Hebrew Bible. And Chronicles was written later. And so Chronicles was written hundreds of years after the events of, of the Samuels and of First and Second Kings. It's basically the same stories, but it's written uh, uh, after the Babylonian exile, and it's got a lot of hindsight. It's like, oh, this stuff was happening. It's not as relevant with the stuff with David. It's in there a little bit, but like with the stuff with the kings, first and second kings, it's 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 pretty wild how because it's almost like they're looking back, going, oh, look at that, and so like that yeah, right right over there, right over there. So the census thing, like, there's something very sinful about the census thing. I was trying to see why they thought it was sinful. But what, but let's, let's think about, let's think about things for a little bit. What, what sounds familiar about like a, a counting the people? Pharaoh. The Pharaoh? Yeah. He was afraid that they were getting too strong. 
That's why he had the first born males killed. That's that's a good catch. That's a good catch. I wasn't there. I, I was I was somewhere I was somewhere else. That's a good on over the pit. Yeah, yeah. Like like the beginning of the story of Jesus. In the census. And remember the census is in Matthew, which Matthew is hyper vigilant of the of the Davidic line of the Messiah. Because it goes through Joseph. And so that's kind of you know, is it picking up in the story of this king doing the census, getting you into that same place where kind of Samuel ends? Is the is the is the Gospel of Matthew doing that, which I haven't picked up before? That's interesting. Yeah, the, the Jewish commentary is that it was uh, censuses were usually uh, at that time preparation for war. Okay. Oh. I don't know how many soldiers they had that's a good catch because yeah. it says that it says exactly how many people have played 800,000 yeah red yeah yeah re ready to go ready to go which shows that that david is is kind of almost like it's this book is saying that his warmongering is is, is the is kind of his downfall but when you get right down to the basics of it just because one army has more or less people than the other army doesn't mean either side is going to win. It's just the God. Yeah, yeah. Trust and, and believe. Yeah, yeah, and that's that. That's definitely a a thread that lines throughout throughout Samuel. Um, that that you know that there's all these stuff like Goliath is happening and and the the um the battle where Jonathan. You know, Saul's son goes up and and God confuses the Philistines and and all of that. But there's also like the bigger the army you have, the greater chance that you're going you're going to win. Mick, you want to say something? I text me time I get an email. That's what I should. Perhaps it's a reflection of being a Tyro, a newbie. Yeah. I am I am stuck on David's choices. Mm -hmm. He's got an opportunity to bring everything on his own shoulders. And he blithely says, now just make my nation star for three years. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I hesitate to want to get into psychoanalysis of David. But this guy's this guy's got some problems. There was a me thing again. <laughs> yeah, he could have said, okay, chase me, chase me around for however long. I'll deal with that. But instead he said, nah, let everybody star. Yeah. Well, it was, did he choose? He chose the plague, didn't he? Yeah. He, chose yeah. The plague, yeah. Yeah. he wanted he to live. Choose, he didn't choose the lesser of the evils. Let me put it. No. Well, yeah. Well, it hit everyone else. It hit everyone else. Yeah. Now, now let's 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 say, you know, let's analyze that. Let's say because that how long was the plague? Three. 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 Three, three days, right? No, no, no. Years. Three years. Yeah, three years. One, three famine is still going to excuse me. The famine, like the three, three days, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Famine, he chose three years. Yeah, it's been famine. Yeah. Famine was three that years. That would have hurt the people. Yeah. Like, they're they're all... He could have done three months of running and hiding, and that would have been it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, but what what's the common thread line? There's a couple of common threads through those through those things like you say you have david running you have you you have um the 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 famine and you have the plagues so so what so what's the common threads we got the threes of course yeah. like the threes of each which is very interesting yeah. like and it's almost like a re again just like it's almost like just like David looks like a pharaoh after the Bathsheba account with that big gaudy thing on, and 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 uh, he's got he's got slave labor making bricks. It's almost like he's now experiencing the what it's what what it's like to be a pharaoh once again. That these like because remember pharaoh like when Joseph came there was famine. And then, yeah, in the past, and, and like, and then you have the plagues, and then you have like wandering around in the in the wilderness, kind of was almost an idea of, of of running away, and it's it's kind of this this kind of collection of of the stories, and I, and I think you you picking up on David's 
poor decision making there, I think is I can't remember the word you used. It was one of those four dollar words, you know. You always put me at ease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's. I always, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's 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 one it's one it's one of those where um where 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 um David kind of chooses one of these things, but it almost kind of sounds like. Uh, like Pharaoh when he was hardening his heart, you know, like that's, there's, there's definitely some similar aspects to going on here. And I think it's fascinating that it talks about a census and then Matthew, the gospel of Matthew picks up with a census. And then the way Jesus in the Christian faith is the way his death is, is, is presented is almost like that plague of three days, but it's but it's on him type of thing. Remember that those clouds and thick darkness cover like the world in 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 Matthew when Jesus dies, like darkness comes over it, which sounds like those those plagues, and 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 then Jesus dies, and it's just it's real curious that it's the same amount of time, and you know and, and it's. And I think all these things, as we read the gospel, I think astute readers, which hopefully we will be from here on out, will remember this, this when when David when David fell, and and like and and connect it, connect that story, then to our own and the kings that are around us in, in this in this day. I don't. I think that's an interesting way of looking at that crucifixion and resurrection. Of of Jesus, in, in connecting that it's it's subtle, you know. Right, it in Jonah too. Three days in the yeah, whale. the three days, three days in the whale with with Jonah. Looking at the end of this, why didn't they add Solomon in here? He was kind of the last one when they were still uniform, uniformed. Yeah. Together, and then if you go ahead into Ezekiel, I just happened to read this. And they are, they become uniform again. They they all come together. Mm -hmm. And uh, some somebody that I went through our Bible study said, well, in 1948, in which I do remember, yeah, Jewish people all went back after the Second World War. A lot of people wanted to go to Israel at that time. Yeah, do you think that's part of God's plan to bring those people back? Um, your yeah, generation, you don't yeah, never yeah, heard about yes, that. It, yes, and no. So, so like that's what everything. So when we read apocalyptic stuff, it's often easy for us to get involved in the like, oh, this is what it looks like, you know. Oh, this was just history. Yeah, yeah. My day. Like, like that's and yeah, and it's over there, world. and that's why I said yes, yeah, yes, and we're looking for a place to go. And we're all destroyed. And, and and just like how we can look at this, and we can see, oh, there's rhyming in in the future patterns that we see kind of going forward. I think that that's why I said yes and no. That there's there's there will always with the nation of Israel, with with God's people collectively. Now that and Christians are part of that now too. There's going to be almost like a breathing of like a dispensing and coming back and you know, and, and moving around. And so, so I think that stuff can, can mean, can mean that, but I, I wouldn't be so bold as to say this moment right here is the moment for, for that to happen. But I would say that yes, in like a poetic sense, it's like, yes, this keeps on happening because we see it happen multiple times in the Bible. They get taken over, they come back and they, and, and again, that happens a few times. We can even see it in the intertestamental, you know, with you know, um, when when Mac, when Judas Maccabeus, you know, overcame Greece and and kind of brought everyone everyone back. And so that's but but it's kind of this. It kind of ends on this on this sad this sad note. Um, uh, as for the. Uh, Solomon and, and having like a unified thing. I think that the two sides are still kind of kind of together, but I think they're kind of keeping Solomon's story kind of yep. like they're ending David and then they're in there. 
coming back with Solomon af after this. So, uh, but I think we kind of ended on this this sad note. But it's 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 I think it's this cautionary kind of tale that it's like don't go back to Egypt. Don't 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 go don't go back there. Don't go back to be like Pharaoh. Don't go go back to all these things because oh man, this all sounds like Pharaoh. All of those options that David was getting sounds just like Pharaoh. And, and it's kind of disgusting. He chooses the shortest amount, but the one he chooses is the one that hurts the most people. I don't think he actually chooses. It doesn't seem like that too much. He actually offers it up to God. Okay. What you said. He, um, Let's see, where is that? He said he said um, he, that it doesn't seem like he chooses, that he's like, like God do it. Um, and David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Let us fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercy is great. But let me not fall into the hand of man. And so he, he's kind of leaving it to God. I think it's clear he doesn't choose the second option, yeah. but he leaves it up to God. Which other option? And up to God's mercy. Yeah, and God's mercy is yes. that it's the one that ends and that He will end it before it hits Jerusalem. And and so, well, he doesn't say that. So so the other thing, the other thing that that I got while I was reading this. Is and you guys know how I feel about Job. I already mentioned it a few times. This sounds like Job a little bit too. Um, not not wholly, but um, my my whole theory on Job is that Job really was never all that righteous. Like they were kind of told he is, but he's really never. And not until God comes and shows him the world in this mighty way, just Job finds like oh. Like I've talked too much, and and I will cover my mouth with my hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lest I yeah yeah speak more. Like I have I have talked too much, and then once Job says that, and this is what kind of reminds me reminds me of all that because there's all this plague and pestilence falling on it. Once Job says that, then God looks at Job's friends and go, Hey, go over to Job, and he'll offer a sacrifice to you. And that's kind of how that a, a sacrifice of forgiveness to you, and and there's and I think we're seeing Hebrew wisdom coming out in here, which Hebrew wisdom is very critical. Like that's like it's not it's not like bright eyes and bushy tails and rainbows constantly. Well, you want to say something? Yeah, I'm I'm toying with this idea of let God make the decision. Because the note here says, Josephus read, I, the shepherd, have caused harm to the people, not the poor sheep. So I took it as God expected David to say, let it fall on me. But it, it, it fell on the people. Mm, yeah. And so it was like... It, and so that was kind of the fall of David was complete. Right. That I that he was I, no longer willing to be the shepherd. David, David does in this He did this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's how my mother feels about me. But no, that's that's a that's a good that's that's a good analysis I think too where where he. He's, he's unwilling to be the shepherd anymore and that the shepherd is the ultimate king. So again, like this is stuff just, it sounds like Matthew. It sounds like Matthew. Like that's when you, when you get and you look at what Jesus is willing to do, Jesus is continuing to willing to be the shepherd, even when it means his own struggle. So that's, that's just like, that's, you know, when Matthew was writing the gospel, you can just see it. He's thinking about these things, you know, as this as this story is coming coming together. So, cool stuff. I know, actually, yeah, a lot of Exodus stuff. I mean, for everyone here understands, even this guy, because I, I was I was good friends with him when I was coming up with all this stuff. But uh, we did a we did an East a Christmas sermon series when when you're here called Exodus, a Christmas story, and, and <laughs> so and it's and it's basically. 
like uh, uh, Matthew's Christmas story um, mirrors the Exodus story. And so, and that's, and that's what we see here. That's what we see here. So that's, I think that that's kind of a, a decent, a decent summary for the Bible study here of um, first and second Samuel. Um, yeah. Just pointed out something at the very end I thought was interesting. It says David finally saw that worship, which costs nothing is not true worship. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of places in there. Yeah, I know. He, he wants to pay for it. And yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Sir. So, um, all right. I have two questions. We're going to, we're, um, before we say goodbye to ever, everyone here, uh, what are we doing next? Do you guys want to go into Kings? You want to keep the story going? Sure. No, I'll, I'll enjoy content here, The ser sermons we're doing a summer sermon series, like that. That's um, but uh, on that's just hodgepodge of stuff. So, um, are we good with kings? Do I do? Do I do kings? Kings. So, so. What, you, what, you witnessed the last true great king. The, yeah. yeah. Oh. And after that, there's like three okay kings. <laughs> <laughs> but it, the bad, like that. That's I, I like. I like the good news. Yeah, I like the good news. Coming. It's also my jam as the bad bad news. You also have to. You also have to uh, wrestle with the question of how many wives is really too many. Golden <laughs> <laughs> yeah. round. A lot of one was funny for me. <laughs> I would agree with you, sir. <laughs> so, so uh, all right, we'll we'll continue with Kings. So, there's there's a moment in Solomon uh, that we'll have fun with, where uh, all of a all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it all falls off the rails. Uh, yeah, yeah, like there's it's kind of like that David with the giant crown. This. This Bible said I would have never seen that, and I probably would have never really taken the time to notice all those similarities there at the end. Like that, that's 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 good. So I appreciate the time spent in this in this Bible study. Uh, so we'll continue that uh, next week. Um, I will.